Hey, g'day Groovers, back for another Guitar Mag Weekly episode, and uh, this week it's from February 91, wow, back when I had hair that long as well, actually, and you can see how good this cover is, honestly, Jim Martin and Jason Becker on the cover, that's f it's fucking crazy, uh, and this was six ninety five back then. You can see here that uh, it's been pretty well worn, this one, and there's pages falling out as we go through it, you'll find, and I've stapled it back together. This went to uh, quite a few jobs in my old backpack on the train, and uh, got who knows how many dozens of reads. So, uh, without any further to do, very tempted to cut that out and frame it. It's an excellent picture, that one. Excellent picture. Into uh, old Mike Varney on the inside cover. Richie's second album there. There's Jason there with his first one. Marty Friedman, a bit of Greg Howe. Got it all going on there. And G&L Guitars. Add another great photo of Jim and Jason there. Unreal stuff. Man, that guitar... So it was always between, if I was going to get one of these signature guitars, it was either between that one, and uh, which I stopped making for quite a while, and the Nuno one. I, I got close to buying the Nuno one a couple of times. I don't know, at the time I just had a problem buying signature guitars off people. I didn't feel like it was, I don't know, felt too guitar nerdy for me. But I do wish I had bought a Nuno. Excellent ad with Vernon Reed there with his uh, time... Wow. Next month, Queensryche, Slaughter, Concrete Blonde, and Thin Lizzy. There you go. Good mix up. Like I said last week, um, it was a good, good mix of genres back in the day. Even though there was a lot of uh, shredding going on in them, but they, were, they, were, they spoke to everyone: country guys, pop guys. Here's Paul Stanley giving it his best pout. In the listening room, asking him about the Pretenders brass in pocket, and um, everybody wants some. Well, Halen, what a great song. Doobie Brothers dedicate this heart. You're on top of the world by Cheap Trick. That was a, I did like that. That was a great idea in the listening room, and they'd they'd ask someone what they thought of certain songs. Sometimes they'd never heard the songs, which was always pretty funny. Sometimes some of the responses. You got a bit of stew ham here. As written by Randy Cavan. Good old PV Bandit. I've still got mine. Needs a repair. I don't know whether it's just a, a, some electrics going wrong with it or whether the speaker finally blew. But I'd um, like to get mine fixed. Great amp. So loud. It's ridiculous. Loud and clear. Eight CDs for one cent. Look at that. I mean, you could stare at that all day. But we won't. Steve Morse column there. Interviewed even with Tom Dowd. Did a lot of work back in the day with uh, Rat and those kind of guys. Here you go. He's got Cream in there, Booker T, and uh, all types of guys. Interesting guy. I've watched some interviews of him. Eddie, back when he first came out with the... Uh, went to be uh, the Wolfgang. Those music man looked great too. I did think it, I, w I should have got one of those actually. That was the only other one that I really thought about at one point. Good faith, no more interview here. Jim Martin and Billy Gould. Some great ads again. Look at bloody Jim Gillette there. Yow. Billy Gould ad. See more Duncan amps. I got the baseline for falling to pieces. And a, a Stew Ham transcription. Terminal Beach. Here we go. This is the part I like. Hopefully, somewhere over the next few years, someone will see one of these and. Um, Say that was me, and I'm still playing, and this happened, or whatever. But here, here we go. Kelly Kamianeki. Kelly Kamianeki. Kelly Kamianeki. There we go. Age 19 he was back in, uh, back in 91. And uh, I don't know where that is. 
NH. Someone let me know. I can't remember where NH is in America, especially right now. Um, influencers Paige Van Halen and Mountstein and Vi. Okay, so let me know if you know anything about Kelly, tell it, Kelly Kamianeki. Here we've got Craig Collins Turner. His influencers are Trower, Rhodes and Holdsworth. And his band's called Highlander. Go for it, Craig Collins Turner. Let us know if you're still going, buddy. And here we've got Julius Kirkio or Kershio. He's 22 back then. And he loves uh, Neil, Sean, Beck, Walsh, and Morse. All right. Let me know if you know those guys, if that's one of you. Here we go. We've got a bit of Stevie Ray Vaughan set up there with the pedals. Just how he was using the EQ. It's pretty interesting, actually, the EQ with the distortion there. I might try that. Let's see what happens when I uh, put the Kramer through it. Might keep that out, and uh, I'll try that tomorrow when I do a live stream. Some nice transcriptions here. That love in the elevator transcription, blah blah blah. It's always that nice rough paper. I love that paper. I never get sick of feeling that. And here we come up to, uh, I believe. Oops. There's the N4. I really do wish I would have got one of those because I think I would have actually, after I tried them a couple of times, I think it really would have fit my hands. But anyway, maybe I still will get one. We had an Aerosmith. I had this obviously cut down and stuck up on my wall somewhere down in the old stank pit. Oh, look at them pushing the PV man. There's the PV Bandit ad again. But it was a top, top amp. Just nice and clean. So as soon as you put any type of effects through it, it just sounded unreal. Stewie. I've got the Hot Leaks videotapes of Danny Gatton, Vinnie Moore, Michael Faff, Stuart Ham, Eric Johnson, Alan Roth, Robin Trower, and Marty Friedman. Marty Friedman brings you exotic metal guitar. Only available on Hot Leaks videotapes, the tapes that really teach. Excellent ads. PRS. Brian Damage Forsyth of Kicks. Playing a PRS back then. Good shit, Brian. That's beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that top there, the way it's cut. Beautiful. You got Chili Peppers. Uh, this is before, this is just before Watsy came out. Blood Sugar. Because in this uh, here, they're talking about um, uh, Mother's Milk. And it's just when Frusciani had joined. So it's an interesting, that was also the poster feature. It's a shame that wasn't, uh, that would have been fantastic, man, if it was Jim Martin and Jason Becker. It was wasted with that foolishness there. That hasn't aged well. That's just silly. But that would have been great with uh, Becker and Jim Martin. Anyway, I digress. So yeah, this is before they really smashed it big. Uh... So that, and that's why I love these old interviews, you know. And there he is, man, Jason Becker. I've bought his his couple of um, orchestral albums. I bought the first one as soon as it came out, and I bought the second one as soon as it came out, just a few years back. And they're, they're unreal, ridiculous, man. But you know, what a great talent! What a great talent! Anyway, I'm glad he's still putting out music. Hopefully he's managed to get a heap of stuff done using that system that, he's, uh, that his dad invented to get stuff done. But um, ah, look how happy he is there. And he had the world at his feet right there. So um, SITs, I used those for a while, the old SITs. I've always been tempted to get a Sustaniac in something. Uh, that always seems like that would be the go, but uh, we'll see what happens. Oh, Eric Johnson playing the old lap. The old lap slide, lap steel. That's fallen out because I've decided to cut it up. There's a uh, transcription of air. 
as recorded by Jason Becker. Music by Jason Becker. Who was it? Just uh, wondering who transcribed it even, maybe. Anyway. There's air for you to uh, have a bit of a look at. See if you can get your fingers around that. And that's dancing, 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 then it really starts to dance. And look at that. Look at that. I used to like looking through these. I wouldn't learn whole pieces, but I'd look at things and go, oh yeah, that looks pretty cool. What are they doing there? And just teach your fingers uh, a few new things here and there. Which is always cool. Look at these arpeggios he's flying through. Fantastic. Not leave this one out for a read. Got the old guitar questions section, amp questions. I mean, how good is that? How much notice, noticeable improvement will replacing the tubes in my ADA MP1 preamp make after two years of use? Answer, the type of preamp tube used in the ADA unit, 12AX7, should be in satisfactory working order after two years of normal use. There you go. So there are the kind of questions and answers you got in the amp questions section. Let's see what happened in the guitar questions. Would frequent and extensive volume swells cause damage to the volume control on my Ibanez 540R? Well, frequent and extensive. I'm going to say yes. And let's see what they say here. Obviously, the more you use your knob, I mean your volume knob, the faster it will wear out. Players who use a lot of volume control effects need more frequent pot replacements than players who use them less. So there you go. But uh, at the same time, duh. Question, what are the pros and cons of bolt-on necks? A bolt-on neck is much easier to work on than a glue-on or neck through. If properly executed, there is no loss of sustain with a bolt-on. In fact, there are no drawbacks at all. It is very easy to remove a bolt-on neck because, as the name implies, it's merely bolted onto the body. There you go. Sorry, I have to... Uh, I, if I read things in my head like that, that's the voice I hear. Just stupid voices. Loving an elevator, blah, blah, blah. Ibanez, Paul Gilbert ad. Pretty cool. There's a Steve Vai. Oh, yeah, the unexpected one. Oh, it still gets me. Every time I open up this magazine, I forget there's this um, Vi. Now, I would have loved one of those, but there was no way I was going to go and jam with people back in the day with one of these. But I would have loved one. So uh, that's that's actually a bit of a short interview, but it was a good one. Surprise interview there with Roy. The old back issues. There we go. Got a tie table there. Doing a Yamaha ad. Man, what you got there, bruh? Headphone amp tuner. Okay. Whatever. Go for it. I'm sure they were a huge success. Um, I've actually got that. I don't have that though. But I do have that one. Yeah. It's funny what you pick up when you go to the old uh, second hand stores back in the day. King's X, Faith, Hope, Love. Oh, Megadeth, Rust in Peace. Judas Priest with Painkiller. Rat with Detonator. The original Whammy there. Different than the one I have. A smaller version with the... Uh, a little bit of a memory. Don Dokken. Uh, from the Ashes. This is when Cherry Pie came out by Warrant. I mean, 91, man. I remember when that album came out. I remember because I loved their first album. That one was good, except they... I wish... what. Um, Cherry Pie hadn't have been on it. That song gave me the shits from the first time I heard it. But there's actually some good music on that album which got overlooked by that annoying song. So I can understand Joni Lane being pretty pissed off with that song at some point. There we go. Bit of Billy Sheen. 
teaching you some stuff here. Guitar profile, Billy Sheen bass secrets. Hosted by the old the old uh, wizard himself, Wolf Marshall. You love doing that stuff. Here we go with a call board. People sending in uh, I'm a bass player in a band trying to get something started. We have a rhythm guitarist, a drummer, and a singer. We're looking for a lead guitarist with ambition who wants to get together and make it happen. We have a PA and the whole works. So there you could get in touch with Alan Parry. In, uh, I believe that might be Utah, is it? And uh, what else have we got here? Anyone saying something funny? I'm a 21-year-old Uruguayan guitar student living in Mexico since 1975. I would like to get in contact with other players attending GIT and other schools, especially foreign students. My goal is to enroll in a good, serious, professional American guitar institute or school, but I have a lot of doubts and questions. I would really appreciate anyone's advice or written responses. That's from Henzo, Henzo Calcagno. Calcagno. Henzo Calcagno. There you go. In Mexico. Well, mate, I hope you made it, Henzo. I hope you made it to school. I hope you studied. I hope you're uh, making a living off guitar somewhere right now. So this is what you people used to do before the internet. They'd write just hoping that someone, somewhere, would have an answer for them about who knows what. And this would happen in all types of magazines and uh, newspapers and what have you. Someone's written a poem here. Shall we read it? I think we should. Okay. This guy was selling um, two strats. One was a Sam Kuntz strat asking three grand and a Fender strat asking 500 bucks with the Philip Kubicki neck. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to read this from Christine K from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Taken so young like a chick from its nest... To us you are heroes, forever the best. As we look to the sky and see a new star, we feel your presence, you're not very far. It races through our minds, everything that you've done. You've touched my heart, like everyone's. I saw your picture on my wall today. Now I see through them, please don't go away. I wish you'd say it's all just a dream. Inside I know you're gone, but can't you hear me scream? I thought I heard your voice today. Was it you? I cannot say. We listen to the wind, hoping for one last song. But just as we hear it, just then it's gone. Today as we look at the place where you lie, we fight back a tear and whisper goodbye. Written in memory of Jimi Hendrix, Randy Rhodes, Ronnie Van Zandt, Stevie Ray Vaughan, and all the many guitar greats who've been taken away from us so early in their lives. You're never forgotten, but remembered always. So true, Christina K from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's fantastic. I wasn't expecting to find that in there. And to be honest, I don't think I've ever, ever read that. So there you go. Doing this is making me really look at these magazines. Dave Sharman. No idea who he is. Probably ripping. I always loved this out of Slash for Guild Acoustic. He's absolutely off his fucking face there. I mean, look at him. How is he playing? There's no way he can play a 12-string looking like that. <laughs> Sorry. There's no way he tuned it. We know that anyway. I mean, he's got a roadie by this point. But look at those eyes. Yeah, baby. And then we get to the end. We get Tesla. Shit, yeah. And uh, the advertiser index at the end, they like to have. And then they finish off with the old Samson, we are the wireless future. Look at that, I'm getting all hooked up on the staples. Staples are falling out. Check it. That's gone. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that one. It's, that is in my top top five not ranked top five, just top five. There's a few that I just have read so many times. They're, they're unreal. They're always uh, motivating and inspirational when you read them. And they just drip with coolness, some mag. I even love the colour of that backdrop for that photo. I love everything about this, this particular one here. So, um, yeah, there you go. Thanks for stopping by again. I hope you enjoyed that one. That was a, that was a really good one. Um, 
who knows what I'll find next week. I tend to just pick this out just as I decide I'm going to record this and uh, kind of go through it fresh. Fresh for my eyes too. And then we get that beautiful poem like from Christine. Was it Christine? Anyway, thanks for joining in this week. Uh, thanks for coming back if you've seen them before. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your brothers and sisters. Say, hey, get over to Guitar Fool. Go and check out a guitar mag. Even if you don't like guitar mags, you will. Because you've never seen them before. So anyway, take it easy and stay cool. <laughs>